So last time we kind of walked you through the basic parts of my shop and, and some of the, the main equipment that I have. Um, but I also also uh, showed a brief video of my pole lathe. Uh, actually, it's a mix of a pole lathe and a flywheel lathe. And the way we've done that is actually attaching a flywheel. In this case, normally a flywheel would just be a, uh, it's just a large heavy object. Uh, what we've got is a uh, flywheel from a Volkswagen VW Beetle uh, and attached it to a bicycle hub, uh, the freewheel bicycle hub. So it turns in one direction, ratchets in the other. And so that gives us the return motion that we can use with our uh, the original spring pole lathe. So that's what I wanted to show you today is how this thing works and uh, what kind of speeds we can get and show it actually work. It actually cuts. So uh, I'll take you on a on a brief tour. So here we have the flywheel mechanism. The flywheel mechanism is attached to, you can see the flywheel. Uh, that flywheel is attached to the bicycle hub. So here you can see the bicycle hub. And that goes to the rope, which then goes to the arm from the pole lathe, and then down. And then you can see there's another rope there that's attached to the spring at the bottom. Now I know I didn't do this correctly and I'm going to redo it, but this got me working right now. Uh, and then you can see that I've got my uh, tail stock that's held on by a wedged tenon down there in the bottom. And, uh, and you can see I've added a, a live center. So you can see I've already been working on a piece. Uh, I did add a, this is running on a one inch shaft on the front side so that way I could use um, some more standard uh, drive, uh, drive centers um, and it's also easier just to find other equipment if I ever want to use it that I can uh, install there or modify pretty easy uh, with a buddy of mine who has done pretty much all the metal work for me on this thing although there's not much metal work um, but what you can't see is that there is inside here where the shaft goes through from uh, from the drive center inside here is a custom built piece that mounts onto that one inch shaft. That one inch shaft runs through, runs through to uh, ba basically just the other side of the flywheel. And I have two bearings, which I don't think you can really see, but I have one here and one on the other side that the one inch shaft runs through. And then you can see here the bicycle, um, the hub, and then you've got the ratcheting mechanism here, which you can hear it ratchet there. Um, that provides the, the driving force. So, and then we just added a, a pillow block uh, bearing back here. The, there is just to allow for some, for us to be able to maneuver the shaft to make sure that it's, it's, uh, it's in line. So this shaft runs through, it runs through the center of this. We board the center of the hub and that shaft runs through too, about right here. And then, you know, this is actually attached to the, to the hub itself. So I'll show you real quick how this works. I've got my treadle down here. Uh, again, it's just a mock up, get things working. And I am by no means a lathe operator. I just want to be able to show everybody how this works. I am in the learning process and this was fun to build. So I'll grab my, just a normal gouge here. There, as you can see, uh, we've got this thing running and it's running pretty good. And I'm not pedaling it now, so there's no, no additional motion added to it. 
but this thing's still spinning. So what I've noticed is um, we probably could have gone with a little bit more weight. The flywheel actually does really good. Uh, it gets it going fast. Um, and so I can generally take a, several steps, get it moving really quick, and then move on uh, without even pedaling and take some pretty light cuts with the smaller gouge. The roughing gouge uh, takes a little bit too, meat, too much meat out of it to, to just let go. But I can cut for a couple inches without the, uh, without the roughing gouge going. And here you can see how smooth uh, some of this is. Let me see if I can try to zoom in there. So you can see here it's a very, very smooth surface. I get such speeds out of this that uh, on this end here where I've used more of a skew chisel or even just a regular uh, inch and a half chisel, uh, I've gotten a really nice glass smooth surface. Over here on the roughing gouge I get what I expect, especially out of dry wood. Um, this is, I had, uh, had to do some repairs on this thing not too long, uh, actually over the last couple of weeks, but we worked on it yesterday. Uh, so from you know dry wood with some separated grain uh, running in different directions, things like that, I'm getting uh, you know it's smooth, but you do get the the rough grain. But if I go over that like this down here with a skew or or my uh, like I said just an overly wide bench chisel, uh, I get that really nice finish. And part of that's because of the speeds we can get out of this thing. I don't know if you heard it on the video, but um, the you can actually start to hear the flywheel hum uh, because it's starting to go so fast. So that's uh, that's the piece that I'm kind of working on. It started out as basically a wet 4x4 four four, uh, and then it dried over the last few weeks here in the Arizona sun. So, uh, or heat, I shouldn't say sun, but uh, it turned out pretty good. So that's the intro to my, to my lathe. And uh, I'm very happy to have it back and in working order so now I can finish a couple of uh, simple practice projects, um, things like that that I originally started working on before uh, before I broke the last one. We actually had a, a bicycle hub on there that was already semi um, not in the best of shape. So uh, you know it, it, it worked and it worked for several weeks um, but then it finally gave out. I had to catch on anyway, a tool and it, that's what I've got. and. Uh, Feel free to leave any comments, but this is my version of a spring pole slash flywheel lathe. Thanks.